Hi there. Welcome to the Schwoben's Nest. Thanks for clicking on my video today. I hope you like what you see, and if you do, I'd love it if you could hit that red subscribe button. Today's projects are all about creating rustic farmhouse decor using some thrift store items and dollar store accessories. I'm starting out with this salt and pepper mill and I'm just going to remove the bottom of the pepper mill and empty everything out so it's hollow on the inside. I did get a bunch of black pepper falling out of here but thankfully it did not make me sneeze. The salt shaker is all in one piece, but of course the pepper grinder isn't because you need to open it up to be able to add the peppercorns. I'm using Gorilla Clear Grip to attach those two pieces together. I wanted to add some type of color to these, but I didn't want to paint them completely. I like the color of that natural wood. The reason I'm using this Rust-Oleum Cocoa Bean Chalk Paint is because I'm going to be adding some rustic wood slices to the top of these and create some candlesticks out of them. The bark color is a dark brown, which you can see in the right hand side there of the screen. And I just thought the dark brown at the bottom would tie everything together. I'm going to use hot glue to glue these pieces together. That's going to be plenty to hold them in place. And once I've got them glued on, this project is all done. You'll have to let me know what you think of this fun upcycle. This is one of those planks that you can get in a pack of five or six from the Dollar Tree. I'm using my DIY chalk paint to give this a couple of coats, but just about the inch around the outside. Once those are dry, I'm going to use some masking tape and tape off a frame, and then I'll paint the inside with my black chalk paint. When I'm thrifting and I see a wood crate, I always grab it because they're so easy to upcycle. A little bit of paint and some decor and they sell really well for me in my area. I was going to paint the slats white, but of course some yellowing came through, so I switched gears and painted it black. Now before you guys all tell me that I should buy some shellac, it's about 30 bucks a can here in Canada and I just can't bear to spend that kind of money on a project like this. I'd rather just paint it a different color. I found this little baby spindle in my stash and would you believe that it is the perfect length for this crate. I just needed to trim off the little dowel pieces at the ends a little bit and it was able to fit right in there. I used that little saw that I picked up at a dollar store not too long ago. It was $5 and it's a really neat little saw and it's perfect for cutting soft woods. I'm going to be using some wood glue just on the ends of the spindle where the dowel portions are and then I'll fit it right inside the crate. To finish off the little sign that I'm going to place on the crate, I went to my Cricut and cut out in white vinyl farm fresh. This makes it so generic. You can add lavender to it. You can add Christmas decor to it. You can put some pumpkins in it and everything will just be farm fresh. So it makes it a really beautiful generic crate that you can use year round. I wanted to take a few minutes to talk about this website, So So Us. It is a small business here in Ontario, Canada, and they are part of my extended family. And Maya, who is 
running all of this, has graciously added me to her small business support page. And so I wanted to give her a shout out back. They do 3D printing to help organize your home, your garage, but specifically your dogs and maybe your barn. They have a farm, they've got a few horses and some dogs, and this has just made their lives so much more organized and helpful. So they've decided to offer these products to other people as well. They have an equine collection, a canine collection, and a home collection. Each product is made from PVA plastic and is available in a single color or dual color. Each product they make has a specific task. For example, a fly mask hook, a halter hook. So these are all custom made to make sure that they fit the job that they're supposed to do. If you have a beloved four-legged friend and you want to make sure that all of their items are corralled safely in one spot, these hooks are exactly what you need. Make sure you go to their special request and custom orders if you want to create something specifically for your home. The other thing that I love about so so us by m and m is that they support small businesses they've even included a little blurb of my youtube channel the schwoven's nest on their page i'll have the link to their website shop down in my description box so when you're done watching my video go check out what they have you never know what you can find to help you organize your home this jar I thought was adorable. I loved the shape of it. It was only $2.99, but it has a little chip at the top and it's really not my style. It's also missing the stopper on it, which probably would have been just cork. I'm going to give it one good coat of Rust-Oleum clear matte finish. That's just going to dull down that shiny surface and give the paint a better grip. When I want something to look like a crock, I use this color and it's called Mushroom and it's one of the paints that I use in my house. I had some left over, so I've just been using it. I added some talc to it to create a chalk paint. And if you're looking for that recipe and those instructions and also the product that I use to create my chalk paint, that is down at the very bottom of my description box. I'm going to be using a chalk paint brush for the initial application, but then I switched to a smaller brush simply because I needed to get inside that little handle. But this covers really well. Once I was done the second coat, but it hadn't completely dried, I took this smaller brush and just started brushing around on the chalk paint just to give it some texture. You can see a little bit here how I'm doing it. It's just going to add some brush strokes and different lines to the piece and just give it a little bit more interest. I only painted half of the crock with my mushroom color because my idea was to add some of this rope down at the bottom and just go about halfway up. I'm using hot glue and I'm going to secure it fairly well with the hot glue all the way around. I don't want to have any gaps. I want the rope to kind of glue to itself so it just holds really, really well. When I get all the way around and I see the seam, what I usually do is glue the rope right up against the cut piece and then I really, really squish it onto the rope itself to give it less of a bump there. And this little piece was driving me nuts. I had to cut it off. Anyway, I'm going to continue doing that. And the more you squish it down when you get to that cut area or where the rope is sort of overlapping, it will get straightened out when you get towards the top. When I get to the end, I always stop at the same place that I started and I cut the rope on an angle. So it's shorter on the top and longer on the bottom. And this gives me the ability to add some hot glue and really push it into the rope that is there previously and make the seam sort of disappear. It turned out really great. You can see here, I'm just kind of squishing it down and that will just make it blend in to the other rope. 
I wanted the rope to be a little darker, so I'm just taking this chip brush and dipping it in some antiquing wax and just kind of rubbing it in and working it into the rope. You do get a lot of frayed little strings this way, but I'm just going to grab my lighter afterwards and burn those off. I like how the darkness of the antique wax just gave it a little bit more contrast to the mushroom color at the top. This project uses mostly dollar store items. I'm going to take this wood round and trace out this sweet farm image and then use my glue stick to attach it to the wood round. I have another wood round that's just a frame and that I did cut out with my laser machine. I'm going to cut out the circle and then just use a glue stick to attach it to the wood round. I used my Cricut one more time to add this welcome in black and I think it just adds the perfect touch to this wood round. I'm just going to use hot glue to apply this outer circle right on top of the wood round. I like the rustic look of the burnt edges of these pieces so I'm going to leave those on the inside and the outside, just the dark wood. But I am going to very gently and carefully paint the top of this round in white. I'm just doing that by using my brush and going in one direction and then in the other direction, and that will prevent me from getting any overspill of the paint onto those charred surfaces. For the second part of this project, I'm going to be using this wreath. It's a grapevine wreath that's been dusted and I got it for $6 at a dollar store. And I'm taking some of these ficus leaves and I'm gonna cut the tips off and make them look more like eucalyptus. This is a really easy way to take some greenery and just reshape it to what you want it to look like. I'm trimming the stem so I have a group of three florals and with this grapevine wreath I love working with these because you can just push your stems in. Now this one was giving me a little bit of trouble because it didn't have a hard wire at the end so it was a little tough. So you can use hot glue if you need to but I'm just going to be working my way all the way around the wreath and I'm going to put these leaves in the same direction. Next, I'm going to take some of these lamb's ear stems and just push them in between, adding some on the top and then some smaller ones on the side, just pushing it in again. And if I ever need to use some hot glue, it's okay, I can do that as well. But I like to do these with these grapevine wreaths because then I know in the future, if I wanna switch it out, I can use the wreath over again. To add even more texture and dimension and color, I'm adding these two stemmed little pieces. These are sort of like a dusty flower as well. They kind of look like the lamb's ear, but they're a little bit deeper in color. And I'm going to just add those in between all the way around. I love adding different colors and textures to the wreaths that just makes them look a little bit more high end and interesting. Once I get all the way around, this wreath is done. The only other thing I did with the sign is add a piece of twine on the back of it so I could hang it with the wreath. I don't wanna attach it to the wreath because I wanna be able to switch out the wreath and just use the sign year round. Thank you so much for spending some of your quality time with me today. I truly appreciate each and every one of you. If you like this content, please give me a thumbs up. That lets me know you like it and I'll bring you more. Don't forget about the subscribe button and that notification bell. See you in the next one. Bye.